the blaspheme. Turn from that. Pick up your cross. Deny everything you wish you had and did. Deny yourself, your selfish desires, and follow Him. MacArthur, John MacArthur puts it like this, No one who is unwilling to deny himself can legitimately claim to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. The phrase, take up his cross, reveals the extent of self-denial to the point of death, if necessary. Cross-bearing begins when the penitent sinner becomes aware that he cannot save himself and holding nothing back, surrenders completely to God's mercy. To deny ourselves is to be selfless. To not be concerned constantly with our own desires, our own wants and needs, but to be people-oriented. To be committing everything we do to God. It's not about our image. And uh, as preachers here, I think we can benefit a lot from this. We can get caught up in the fact that our faces are posted on walls out here. And we're in a nice booklet and that we may get interviewed and things like that. But really, truly, that's not, that's not what we're here for. We're all here in the name of Jesus Christ to proclaim His gospel regardless of who notices. And we can be caught up in our image and ourselves and, and constantly be thinking about who we are and what we do and how good we are or, or just about our own wants and desires. But to be a disciple, you have to deny yourself even to the point of death if necessary. Your job in life is to glorify God. That's why we proclaim his gospel, we preach it, we witness to people, we love people. 1 Peter 2.12 and Matthew 5.16 speak of the same things. Matthew, of course, Jesus is speaking in the same way, let your light so shine before men, let your light shine before others. He's speaking here that in the end he says, so it will glorify your Father who is in heaven. He's not talking about anything, hey, look at me, I've got the newest thing, I've got the newest item. Hey, look at me, I'm a great preacher. Let your life be something that glorifies God. It's very clear. Getting people to admire anything about us, building up our own image, building up our own ways of life is not biblical and it is not Denying yourself and following Christ. In verses 36 and 37. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what can a man give in return for his soul? Sometimes when I'm out uh, preaching, I open air preach a lot and I go we hand out tracts and things to um, to a lost world and a lot of times when we go through the law with someone we'll go through uh, the Ten Commandments to show people who they are before God you ever told a lie you ever stole anything you ever look with lust adultery of the heart and a lot of times people will respond well and we get to the point where they say alright well if you stand before God as a liar a thief an adulterer at heart and he judges you, will you go to heaven or hell? And a lot of people, surprisingly, will say, hell. At that point, say, well, does that concern you? And surprisingly, some people will say no. And a man said this one time, is this analogy that I really like, and that is, it kind of illustrates how important our soul is to us. It says, will you sell me your eye for a million dollars? The person says, no. No, I wouldn't do that. And he said, what about both eyes for ten million dollars? No. He said, what are you going to do without both eyes? Go see the world? I mean, come on. The point that illustrates is that uh, your eyes are just a window to your soul. Your, your soul looks out of your eyes. And if you're not willing to lose one of those windows, how much more important is your soul to you? Why would we pursue anything other than our eternal destiny, which is what saves our soul? It's important for us to understand we must deny ourselves the point of death, if necessary, and we must pick up our cross and we must follow Him daily. It is a daily activity. You get rid of our sense of entitlement. You get rid of our sense of image. 
and to truly be a follower of Jesus Christ. So how much does it cost to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? It costs everything. And what keeps you from being a disciple? Whatever you won't give up. Pray with me again, please. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this time to get to be here, to get to proclaim your gospel. And, and I just pray, Lord, that you will, um, you have been glorified here and that you will continue to glorify yourselves through these next preachers, allowing us to put ourselves away and truly focus on what is important, and that is you. Thank you for your blessings, for who you are, for dying to save someone like me. I praise you. In Jesus' name.